Greetings, fellow musicologists and metal scholars of the world out there. How are you today? I've been into a kick of the first three Metallica albums, and a question popped up in my mind. Why is Cliff Burton's bass sound so low in Metallica mixes? Let's take Kill 'Em All out of the equation, because that album is the only one of the uh, Cliff era where you can actually hear the bass without having to resort to EQing. So I'm going to give you some reasons why I think that this is. Reason number one, I believe it's just the Metallica statics. Uh, they are the ultimate garage band. They're the thrash godfathers who have the riff master, you know, Papa Hat. And he comes up with the best riffs. He's the down picking king of the world. His guitar sounds powerful, bassy, doomy. So there's already a component of their sound that will have to be considered. On top of that, you have the drums of Lars Ulrich. These two pieces are actually the heart and foundation of Metallica. Competing against these two mammoths is actually no easy task. And let me say that Cliff shone like no one else. He was the oldest and he was the wisest in terms of like music theory, counterpoint, arranging. But still, once James and Lars were in charge with the production, and that took place from Ride the Lightning onwards, it became harder and harder to leave the bass stand down in the mix. Let's listen to the first track on Ride the Lightning. It's called Fight Fire with Fire, and the intro was actually written and arranged by Cliff Burton. When you have, you know, Cliff Burton in your band, you know, he's the bass god, he's the Jimi Hendrix of the bass, one would imagine that he would be mixed louder. But this is actually a convention. You know, in most metal bands, people just say, oh, you know, the bass should be felt, bass shouldn't be heard. And in my opinion, this is bullshit. You know, that the bass adds so much to any mix. The bass is louder, you, you, you can add distortion, use it as a lead instrument or to just keep that low end really tight. Bring it up a little bit. It might be like a double-edged sword because it might gel really well with the guitars and you know a lot of times they're just playing the same riff. So I understand that it, you know it can mask things up a little bit. Either way with Cliff you know he's he was really creative. Let's try an experiment here. Let's listen to the same track you know but let's get the rhythm guitars of James out of the way just so we can experience how powerful Cliff's bass lines were. So you can already tell if it was mixed properly, it could have added so many layers to the song. Now let's listen to one of the most classic songs from Ride the Lightning. It's called Creeping Death, really famous tune. Here is the remastered version done by Metallica. And here's a mix I did about five years ago. As you can tell, the song gains in heaviness, you know, it's got punch, it's got this doomy atmosphere, it's a whole new experience. So my question is, why? Why Metallica, you know? And the only reason I can come up with is aesthetics, you know, it's convention. It's the garage band type of aspect with guitar and drums. And once you have the early thrash bands, you know, once they started to come to the scene in the mid 80s you can already tell that they had more of this garage band aspect bands like exodus or slayer they didn't really feature the bass in their mixes you know kind of like metallica did but either way they should have mixed cliff way louder than they did the ultimate sin in my opinion was done on the call of cthulhu 
there's a bass solo and you can't really hear the freaking details. You need to wear headphones. You have to EQ the shit out of the mix. And it's still really tough to hear what Cliff's playing. So uh, let me give it, let me show you. So here's the remastered version uh, that Metallica did. <laughs> haven't really found the isolated tracks but here's a mix done by youtuber ryan and i'm gonna post the link here in the description for you to listen to his mixes but just check this out <laughs> such a phenomenal instrumental that you know cliff shone like a star and you know it just should have been louder but i could spend hours and hours here showing you various examples but it's easier for you yourself to analyze these nuances you know i suggest that you visit my mixes here i've remixed tens of metallica tracks in order for people to have a different perspective trying to reimagine the bass interaction with the rest of the band humans love social conventions patterns we get used to listening to metal with guitars and drums super loud but that doesn't hinder our ability to think that in in a, in a, in a parallel universe we could have these bass driven mixes we could have the bass as a, a, a lead instrument or more prominent in the mix and that wouldn't really alter how people experience metal and in the future we're going to tackle inaudible bass lines and i'm looking at you and justice for all please subscribe for more content and check out my uh, other metallica videos and remixes and loud basses i'll see you in the next video remembering that music is what music does thank you so much bye now